This fall, we got to spend a splendid couple of days exploring the highlands of Scotland in the famed Isle of Skye. Situated on the northwestern tip of Scotland, this unique island is the largest of the Inner Hebrides archipelago. It boasts vibrant green turf scattered across the mafic volcanic rocks, flat table hills, jagged sea cliffs, and geological wonders that inspired scenes for some of our favorite fantasy films. This great isle has just over 10,000 inhabitants, yet 100,000 sheep, keeping most of the landscapes preserved and untouched while the sheep roam and graze freely. In this video, we'll go through the important need-to-knows to get the most out of your journey to Sky. From how to get here, where to stay, when to visit, and what to bring, we'll be covering all the details right here. And stay tuned till the end, where we'll be diving into the top 7 best sites in this slice of Scottish paradise. Let's get into it. So how do we get to Isle of Skye? Connected by a bridge to the Scottish mainland, the main way to reach the Isle is by car. No matter which airport you're landing in, it's going to be quite the drive. The closest airport is in Inverness, a three-hour drive away, which pretty much receives exclusively domestic UK flights. The two other airports you'll likely fly into Scotland are Glasgow and Edinburgh, which are both five plus hours away. After our flight landed in Edinburgh at 11am, it was already dark by the time we settled into our place in Isle of Skye. To reach and explore Isle of Skye, there are three major methods. You can either rent your own regular car, you can rent a camper van, or if you want to forget about driving altogether, you can go with the hassle-free option of booking a tour. We found a great three-day tour that allows you to kick back, relax, and enjoy the journey, which we've linked in the description below. With a camper van, you get your transportation and accommodation all in one. The thing people worry about most with a camper van or motorhome is where do you park to sleep? But in Isle of Skye, you've got a few options. You can park at one of the campsites where they have all the facilities you might need. You can park at dedicated overnight car parks near or at the major sites or you can park for free along the streets or roadsides. Just remember for the latter to keep an eye out for any signs saying no overnight parking. As much as we loved camper vanning when we were in Iceland, we ended up finding a really cozy place near all the major spots on our sky itinerary that was just too good to pass up on. Sometimes having a comfortable home base and driving out from there in a smaller vehicle is the way to go, and for this trip it was, and we'll explain why. When making your way to and around the Scottish Highlands, the road conditions aren't the most relaxing to drive on. Single lanes on winding, narrow roads are the majority, and as it was our first time driving on the left side of the road, it took some getting used to. Once you're in Isle of Skye, most of the roads are for the most part meant for single file traffic and have dedicated pullouts or passing places to veer into when oncoming traffic needs to squeeze past you. Add in some blind spots from the winding roads and you definitely need to be 100% attentive while driving. Potholes aren't uncommon either given the weather Northern Scotland experiences. The most promising and warmest weather you'll get here are during July and August. Does that mean it's the best time to visit? Not necessarily. We almost always advocate for traveling during the shoulder season, especially for destinations like Skye. Late spring, as in May and June, are a quieter alternative to the summer months while sharing some better weather. September and early October are the next best with even fewer crowds, and that's when we came. It may have been chillier and wet, but on the flip side, we never had to worry about finding a parking spot, dealing with increased prices, or fighting for food at the grocery marts. The three things we recommend you bring are a warm windbreaker or puffer jacket, a rain jacket, and waterproof hiking boots with great tread. Isle of Skye has some of the lowest vacancy rates we've ever seen. The main towns that people tend to stay in are Uig, Dunvegan, and Portree, with Portree being the most popular as well as the capital of the region. These towns are nearest to some of the top spots in Isle of Skye, which we'll get into in just a bit. They're also the top hubs for great stays, dining, and shopping. However, even at the time we went, it was slim pickings for decent properties in these towns when we looked during the two months prior to our trip. Now that we've covered the bulk of what you'll need to know for your trip to Isle of Skye, here are the top 7 iconic spots that you don't want to miss. 
If we had to pick one place that stands out the most in all of Skye, it would have to be Old Man of Store. Just a 20 minute drive from Portree, these tall black needle-like columns create a picture that is so otherworldly. The pinnacles are ancient volcanic plugs that have been eroded most likely by a landslide. The rock formations are so captivating that you'll want to get up close to them and see them from all sides, which is why this short hike is quite frankly the most popular and busiest out of all of Skye's landmarks. To avoid the crowds, we made sure to be here just around sunrise. There are two ways to hike up to the Old Man of Store, a longer yet easier route that takes you around and circumvents the more strenuous uphill with scenic views along the way, while the shorter direct way up gets you to the store viewpoint faster. After the junction point of the two trails, there are more stairs and uphill that await to reach the pinnacles. We just finished the first half of the hike and it's amazing seeing Needle Point. The old man has stood this entire area open up in front of us. We got probably another 15 minutes or so to go, but once we get up there, I'll bet it's gonna look absolutely amazing. We recommend continuing on all the way to the store lookout point that sits at the top of a cliff on the north side of the rock structures. It offers the best view of Old Man, the coast, and the nearby cliffs and waterfall to the north. Within just 45 minutes from the parking lot, this hike is worth the trek. A second formidable hike is the Kui Rang Walk. We're not sure why it's called a walk because it didn't feel like one. The hike follows a narrow trail along the eastern face of the Kui Rang Mountain, the northernmost summit of the Trotternish Ridge in the North Peninsula of Skye. In terms of steepness, the Kui Rang Walk is quite easy going as the trail is fairly flat, going up and down slightly. The length of the hike is moderate at about 7 kilometers for the whole loop, taking about 2-3 to three hours to complete. But after some days of rain like we had, finishing the whole loop can be tricky, as the trail gets thick with mud and flowing streams down the landslip can be too daunting to cross. Which is why on the day we came to Quirang, we did an out and back hike instead, going as far out as around the summit and turning back. It's only a 20 minute drive from the village of Uig or a 10 minute drive from Staffin, making it easy to access from both the east and the west sides of the island. But the narrow single track mountain road coming from the east that snakes up a high incline can be a little treacherous. Reserve this hike for a clear and dry day for the safest and most comfortable journey. You'll be met with some of the most gorgeous, unobstructed views of the Scottish Highlands with high cliffs and pinnacles, hidden plateaus, lakes in the valleys, and the sea in the distance. Heading all the way to the westernmost point of Isla Skye, a little over an hour away from Portree or Uig, but close to Dunvegan, you'll find the incredible Neist Point. This tiny peninsula stretches out into the vast blue in an epic landscape of green laden plateaus that collapse into barren sea cliffs. Being on the very west of the island, prepare for some extreme winds on the edge of the cliffs. You might have some toque or hat escapees if you don't hold on to them. The trek to the viewpoint was short and unmarked, but there's a well-constructed trail that leads you right down to the beautiful lighthouse. It's a lovely hour and a half round trip walk along the plateau if you have some time to spare. Heading up to Uig, we find ourselves amidst enchanting hills known as the Fairy Glen. Given the scenery's fantastic and fairy tale appearance is how it got its name. As the folk tales go, fairies are said to live underground in cone-shaped hills like these. There definitely was a magical feel to this otherworldly landscape with vibrant colors veiled across the countryside. The trails throughout the glen were nicely paved, making the area easy to explore, and we could even climb up to the top of this rock summit resembling a fort. 
While you're here, you may find some bizarre spirals in the valleys marked by stones that look mystical, but in fact have just been placed by visitors in the past couple of decades. Sorry to break it to you, but they aren't some mysterious historical landmarks like Stonehenge. When visiting the Fairy Glen, it's all about the unusual natural topography and the many waterfalls you might spot in the distance. Back on the northeast coast of Isle of Skye, 30 minutes north of Portree, is one of the most fascinating sea cliffs on the entire island, Kilt Rock. The basalt columns that run down the face of the cliff much resemble the pleats of a kilt, one of Scotland's iconic national symbols. But what makes the sea cliff so captivating is the waterfall that runs down the face of the cliff from Loch Neilt. If there is one place on this list that looks even more beautiful a day after it rains, it's this one. Milt Falls cascades more abundantly with recent rainfall, like it did when we came to see it. Visiting Kilt Rock is the quickest stop on this entire itinerary. We probably only spent about 20 minutes here, and with the newly built parking lot and large observation area, it's easy to hop in and out to capture the site if you're on a tight schedule. Just five minutes south is the most underrated spot on this list, the Brothers Point. There's a small dedicated parking lot just across the main roadway and a private road leads the trail to a completely off the beaten track area. The muddy trail ends along the rocky shoreline where you'll find prehistoric dinosaur footprints and an unchartered landscape. Hiking up to the ridge line gives you a full view of the Brothers Point and stunning peninsula, offering a similar scene to Neist Point. It's a short trek at less than four kilometers out and back with give or take an hour to complete, but it definitely can be confusing hiking in the area, trying to find the trail amidst rocks, marsh, creeks, and mud. Definitely pack yourself some waterproof hiking boots for this one and try to save it for a dry day. final spot on this list, just a three minute drive from the last, is Lealt Falls. We didn't expect much for this one prior to making the stop, but we're surprised with what we found. Within a hidden gorge, Lealt Falls thunders down in two sections, covered by vibrant greenery. When coming here, the first viewing platform beside the car park nearest the road gives a somewhat obstructed view of the falls. We recommend heading up to the additional parking lot for a more panoramic viewing platform that faces out to the sea and into the gorge. From here, there are even further observation decks and a trail leading down the cliffside facing out to the Black Pebble Beach. Before we finish, we just wanted to point out two more important things you'll probably want to know about these spots. What are the parking and toilet situations like? While Nice Point, Brothers Point, and Lealt Falls were free to park at, the other sites took a small parking fee between two to five pounds. We thought this parking fee would constitute available toilet facilities, but sadly this was not the case. The only place that had its own washroom facilities was Old Man of Store. So be sure to use the restroom before you head to any of the other spots. That's it folks for our guide to venturing the phenomenal natural landscapes of Scotland's Isle of Skye. There are more amazing sites that came so close to making the list, but we hope this gives you a great start to planning your trip to Skye. Let us know in the comments below what you're most excited to see in the Scottish Highlands, and we'll catch you on our next adventure.